Shalom Chavrin. It is uh, always a pleasure to get the chance to speak to you guys and uh, something the Lord kind of placed on my heart and I wanted to share with you a little reading I was doing here in the book of Luke. And uh, um, But before I do, let me just kind of set uh, a record straight here because sometimes I get accused of being um, that I don't believe that there is a Gentile bride or that... Uh, I belittle the Gentile people and their role as being grafted into the vine. And that's not the case. But, uh, but I, I deeply love and appreciate the Christian people, the Gentile believers uh, that, that are Christians. In fact, it's, it's been the, they have carried the torch of the gospel of Christ and, and many, many millions have been burned at the stake, true Christians down through the years that, there's no way we can discount this. But what happens though in my own ministry, God deals with me more in regards to my own people, trying to get them to recognize who the Messiah is. So sometimes if I say a little something that seems to lean like that way, please don't misunderstand me. My heart and love for the Christian people, especially those that stand for Israel, to have a revelation to know that Israel is God's anointed, their chosen people. When I say chosen people, it's because they played a major role in bringing forth the sacrifice for sin, including the offering, placing in the hands of the Romans, Yeshua, to be crucified. And so they fulfilled their priestly role in what they did. And as a result, the Jewish people have played, or excuse me, paid one of the highest prices that could be paid for carrying out the divine order, the divine decree of God in order to offer up Yeshua as the sacrifice in order to release the Spirit of God that was inside of him. I know Rabbi Singer has asked me to try to give him definitive clearness on who I believe Yeshua is. And that's where the definitive line lays at. It was God's own life inside of that human body called Yeshua. That's what made him God. The flesh part, the man part, was humanity. It was the kinsman redeemer. He is the Boaz. As we read in the story of, of Ruth, he's Boaz. And what's so beautiful about the Christians is Ruth represents the Gentile believer. And she certainly is not looked down upon. She becomes the bride. In fact, right now the Gentiles are engaged to Yeshua as a chaste virgin, according to Paul's words. Now, Israel is married to God, something that he did on Mount Sinai with Israel. And the Gentiles are engaged to be married. We know about the wedding feast that is coming up very soon. Can't wait to see that. Can't wait to be a part of that. But I also realize, though, that when I do speak about the Christian people, please understand, my brothers and my sisters, that a lot of times I'm trying to address my own people. I'm trying to get their attention. And if I say a little something that seems like that I'm not for the Gentile people, please don't misunderstand that. Know that I love you. I, I thank God. I know that the millions of Christians that have given their life, uh, the, the, the Catholic Church, in fact, has put to death 66 million true believers that have carried the torch, the life, uh, the light of the gospel down through the ages. But also remind, reminded in my, uh, as far as in the word of God, when we look at the story of Ruth and Boaz, how that Ruth, when she comes to Boaz, and Boaz says to her, it has been told to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law, Naomi. Isn't it interesting that Boaz, a type of Yeshua, which is Jesus, a type of Jesus, he notes the fact that Ruth He's, he, he brings it, makes it a point to say that he has heard all the good things that she has done towards her mother-in-law. And we realize that Naomi is a type of Israel in exile, comes back, half her sons all killed, and only one daughter-in-law is willing to go back. We know, of course, her sister, or excuse me, um, Ruth's sister-in-law does not come back. She ends up going on and being with the Muslim people, the type of the Gentile believer that does not go all the way. But Ruth does go all the way. She is the grafted in uh, of the olive tree that Paul speaks about, 
grafted into the, into the natural branches. She becomes part of Israel. She is, the, she is spiritual Israel in the respect that because she's not born of a flesh, but even in the flesh Israel, we have to become part of the actual vine itself. In our own people, we have been cut out of that tree. Even though we're natural branches, we were cut out because partially because of unbelief. The other part is because why? We're blinded. The Jewish people are blinded. So let me share with you some of the words that are written right here in the book of Luke. I want to just set the stage. It's in chapter 6, and let's start with verse 27. But I say unto you, which, um, which here love your enemies... Now notice what he says here. This is Yeshua speaking. He says, but I say unto you, which hear. In other words, you have an ear to hear. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. He's talking about Israel. Does not Paul say they are enemies to you in Romans 11? But they're beloved for the Father's sake. See? And so Yeshua is already, he's, he's basically prophesying, not just to the Jews of that day there, but to all future generations that would believe in Yeshua. So he says to them, and unto him that smiteth thee on the, on the one cheek, offer also the other, just like they did him. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take, take thy coat also. And I missed verse 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, I know not every Jew is guilty of using the Gentiles. The point is, is it's, it's, it's highlighting the, the emphasis, you know, and, and Yeshua is telling you, you that have the ear that you can hear. In other words, God has opened your ears to hear. Don't turn against the Jewish people because they cannot hear. See, give to every man, verse 30, give to every man that asketh of thee and, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as you would, would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what think have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. You notice he doesn't put them in the camp of sinners. Isn't it interesting? You would think that the guys that curse you and hate you and do all these evils to you are sinners. But he doesn't put them in that category. He's telling you who they are. It's Israel. She's blinded. But do you know what caused me to realize what this was speaking about? It's when you get around verse uh, 39. It says, And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind, excuse me, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Wow. He's referring to... Now, he's talking about those that actually could hear. There's going to basically, there's going to come a time where the Christian would be blind as well. And he says to them, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Now, you might say, Brother Steve, you know, the Gentiles, we're not blind. Not Every Gentile is blind. There's many of you guys that have your eyes open and thank God for it. And I praise God for that. In fact, if it wasn't for the fact that your eyes were open, you wouldn't even give me the time of day either. But there's many that sit in churches. What does the scripture say over in Revelations chapter 3? You're blind, miserable, naked, and don't even know it. This is what happens to the church. This is why the Pope is willing to go over there and side with the Palestinians and turn his back on Israel. This is why the different churches that have joined up with the Vatican, including uh, Kenneth Copeland and his bunch, there's those from the Baptist uh, organizations, the Pentecostals, etc., that have joined in. The Lutherans have joined in. And they're accepting the doctrine that the Vatican is bringing against Israel. So he addresses this to those that do hear. The, the, see, even, the, even in the Gentiles, you have become a remnant yourself. 
You're just a remnant now yourself. Just like Israel was 2,000 years ago, they were very religious. They were the most religious people on the face of the earth. And do you not realize, though they were religious, they could not recognize Yeshua when he was in their midst. And today... This is why you see in the comments, you know, people say, oh, Steve, you're a false prophet. I never claimed to be a prophet in the first place. How could I be a false prophet if I don't even claim to be a prophet? You're a false teacher. Well, they come up with another one. You know, it's sad. But it's because they've become blind. And so he says here, this is speaking of Israel. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? So in other words, if all these ecclesiastical movements that want to go teach Israel the way they should do, they're blinded already. They're blind, naked, and don't know it, according to Revelation chapter 3. I believe that's verse 17. I kind of glanced at the computer. I cheated. <laughs> so, anyway, this, um, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. But yet there's been those that have exalted themselves above Christ. This is what Antichristo does. Satan is not satisfied to be the guy on the sideline. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? They're constantly trying to accuse Israel. Now, this is, this is so-called Gentile Christians. And I say so-called because there are true, genuine Christians that are Gentile believers that love God. They love Israel. There's a lot of true ones that just don't even realize yet that God has not forgotten Israel. There's many good Christian people that are stuck in denominational churches that teach against Israel that know no better, but in their heart they feel convicted that this is not right. No wonder why he says, come out of her, my people, and be ye not partakers of her sins. Don't get caught up into this nonsense. But he says, either how canst thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat out of thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For thorns, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. I just thought you guys would really enjoy this. To see, always remember that verse 27, but I say unto you, which hear. And remember also, he talks about sinners that do the same. So even though Israel had lost their hearing and they had become blind, he never called them sinners. Why? They were covered by His blood. His blood has atoned for Israel because why? They played the most vital role in the restoration of the life of God or the Holy Spirit to be able to come back into our own lives as well, both Jews and Gentiles. We are able to partake from the tree of life because Israel was obedient in offering the sacrifices unto God, and when they offered up Yeshua, it is what allowed God's own life to come out and to come back upon us. We should do just like Jesus says. If they want something, just give it to them. You know, don't curse them, bless them. Everything we can do that is honorable, let's be like Christ. He loved them with all of his heart because he knew what they would do. He knew what they had to do. That's why even he was not angry with Peter when he knew he would deny him three times or deny him uh, twice before the cock crowed, crowed three times. I, I forget the exact way that happens, but you know what I'm talking about. 
I love you guys. And I thank God for you. If you've got friends that are Christians that don't realize the importance of loving Israel unconditionally. Now I realize not every single person that claims to be a Jew will be saved. It's still going to be a remnant even amongst the Jewish people. But if you've got someone that doesn't understand that, pray for them and try to help them to see God's got an anointed, anointed of Israel that are going to come forth very soon. That time is nearing as we see the events transpiring all around us with the Pope of Rome going. And I had a brother send me, I wish I had his name before me right now, but he sent me an article today. I saw it in, in my YouTube channel, in my inbox. Brother, please forgive me. I didn't recall your name right off hand, but, uh, but he sent me a, an article. And how he, one of the points that he brought out in that article that was online, this is on the Vatican's website, that they're going to visit Palestine. But the way they worded it about Israel, and I forget the exact wording, but a special, or some kind, Israel's visit was not the same as Palestine or the Palestinians. I hate to say the word Palestine because really there is no Palestinian nation. It's just occupying Israel. Anyway, I won't get into that. I want you to be blessed with this video. God bless you, bro. We love you. Good night.